Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Today's matchup features a couple of big targets who will be looking to get open in the middle of the field. It's the Bills going up against the Panthers. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Carolinas and Bank of America Stadium here in Uptown Charlotte. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Buffalo Bills. And welcome again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gaud. And, and Larry, he took a moment to highlight the tight ends that we're going to see in this one. I know in our production meeting, we were talking about what we wanted to highlight pregame. And you said tight ends. Why did you say that? Because it can be such a matchup issue for defenses nowadays. Because these tight ends, they're oversized guys, but they can run as well. So who are you going to cover them with? If you use a traditional linebacker, they're usually going to run past those guys. If you're going to use a smaller corner, maybe they'll be too big. Can a safety match up and run with them and also use enough bulk to keep them from just having their way? So, so many ways that tight ends are used nowadays, they're fun to watch. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They're led out by their big-bodied electric quarterback, Cam Newton. That word focus is used so often in the NFL, and I think that in this case, the word refocus will come to mind when you think about Cam Newton. 15 wins in a Super Bowl appearance after the 2015 season. Last year, just six wins. I think Cam comes back with a whole new dedication and a new way of doing things, moving the ball around and maybe the running backs a little bit more instead of carrying it himself. They go play action here on first down. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he's brought down after a good game. A really nice gain of 25 yards. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. Tackle there, but not a ton to show for it. Tackled just on the other side of midfield. Kelvin Benjamin has to be a feature of this offense that's on your screen now. Definitely a number one receiver, a huge target with some speed. It's almost like go-go gadget when he goes up to get the football. No matter how you defend him, he can go just a little bit higher. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. <laughs> and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. the penalty here's Stewart and he'll take this one down near the 15 credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine 
And we take a look at the Bills' defense. This defense has always carried itself with a swagger, and one of the things they take great pride in, rushing the passer. They were sixth against the pass in 2016. Have to shore up their run defense, though. Just 29th. That's quite a surprise, considering the athletes they have on that side of the ball. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Newton turns and hands to Stewart. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. And Gano's kick is right through. And the Panthers stay claim to a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball. Put points on the board first and let everyone start to celebrate. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. To return, it's Kalen Clay. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. Leading them out in his seventh year now out of Virginia Tech, Tyrod Taylor. In his two years as a starting quarterback in Buffalo, he had over 1,100 yards on the ground. So we know that he can scoop, but don't underestimate his right arm either. 37 touchdown passes and just 12 interceptions in those two seasons. here back at the 23 yard line it's a loss of a yard there and now second down So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Quickly now, here's the Buffalo offense. Well, the one thing we do know about Buffalo, they love to run the football. Number one in the NFL in 2016 in rushing yardage. Expect that to continue, but look for an upgrade in the passing game. If they add that, they could be really dangerous. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. Losing yardage here back at the 21 yard line. It's a loss of a full three yards and it brings up fourth down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big time tackle. 
I want to try to check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to punt it away. Christian McCaffrey deep for Carolina. Fights through him. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And again, the footwork. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. First down, it's Newton. A dump off here to Stewart. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. Newton to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Kyle Williams able to drop him for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. And now out come the Bills. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. There we go. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. That one's good for 35 yards on the ground and a first down. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Now it's Taylor. 
He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Zay Jones, a second-round pick from East Carolina. Some thought could have been a first-round pick from East Carolina. High-volume guy at East Carolina. I mean, the big-time catch, 158 of them in 2016. And he's an NFL legacy. His father, a longtime linebacker in the league. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now flags will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early. Now Taylor. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And the starting defense here for the Panthers. When I saw that the Carolina Panthers were ranked 21st in total defense in 2016, I thought it was a misprint. This is a very talented defense, but they didn't play up to those standards in 2016. Perhaps the loss of Josh Norman at corner hurt them in the secondary. Luke Keekley, their middle linebacker and their heart and soul of their defense, wasn't able to play a complete season, and they didn't get the same pass rush in 2016 that they had in the previous year when they went to the Super Bowl. They go play action now. Taylor. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. And it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass incomplete. Third and long, it's Taylor. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. The Bills passing game, getting him down the field. They've got another first down. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Here we go! Red From the red zone now, here's Taylor on first down. This will be caught at about the five. And he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Alone to the right is Jones. Now it's Taylor. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. K-1 short. Busting through to get him for a loss of six. 
Look, Carolina had a number of issues last year, and that's why they slumped to 6-10 and 10 after a Super Bowl appearance. But pass rush wasn't a problem for them. They still got to the quarterback. 47 total sacks. That was just one behind Arizona, who led the league. Yeah, I think the biggest issue for them, young corners that gave up a lot of big plays. Third and long. Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Now Taylor. They'll set up the screen here to Tolbert. And he's not even able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now there's also a flag down. And it's in the area of holding. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. On fourth down, Sean McDermott trots the field goal unit out there. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Bills are going to tie the game at three. So three points is the outcome, but probably not what they're looking for given the drive that they were on. Yeah, things were looking good. You had it first and goal, but then the offense sputters a bit, and they're forced to settle for a field goal. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now Newton on first down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Greg Olson was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because likely, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. On second down, they run with Stewart. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. By the way, partner, that was a 30-year-old running back carrying the ball there. Yeah, turned 30 back in March, did Stewart. Yeah, I know that people say that you're not supposed to at the age of 30, but Jonathan Stewart, good style, good physicality. He'll continue to run it. Hoping to keep him healthy. Hasn't played a full 16 games since 2011. Now Newton completes it to Dixon. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. Now Stewart on first down, and a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt.
This is Stewart again. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. He lost two there. And it's third down. Yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. The Panthers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Out of the gun, Newton. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that will bounce out of bounds before they can get a return going. So the two sides will make the long walk to the other end of the field. It's a tight game here early. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. For McCoy in the last seven years, five of them over a thousand yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. Six. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third down. Charles Johnson's stock and trade is coming off the edge and getting to the quarterback. But he knows how to make some of those subtle moves inside to help in the run game, and he did it right there. He's an athlete back in high school. He's played football, basketball, track, so he's a mobile guy. Mobile guy made a nice play against the run. The Bills on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Here we go. From the gun, it's Taylor. And that is incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here's Colton Schmidt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Taken right around the 44. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. Carolina getting set to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach 
Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Newton gives off to Stewart. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. To throw on second down is Newton. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Newton to Olson there for a Carolina first down. These two, Newton and Olson, they have formed quite a partnership. Olson, three straight years over 1,000 yards receiving. The first time in NFL history, Charles, that a tight end's done that three consecutive seasons. And the tight end's supposed to be an accessory to an offense. But in Carolina, Greg Olson is the primary receiver. time as he's taken down right around the 26. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. On second down, here's Newton. And the tight end, Olsen, right side. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Panthers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. From the gun, here's Newton. And this is going to be incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. And Gano's kick is right through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading field goals here in the opening half. No breakthrough yet on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. And really, I like what I've seen from both of these defenses thus far. Both have been a little more aggressive than I expected. And I think that's reflected in what we see on the scoreboard, which is no touchdowns to this point. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That's fielded in the end zone. Gets past one man. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Jordan Matthews and the rest of his offensive mates heading back out there. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Yeah, something to get in the ball. We'll see if they can do it. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Taylor to throw on second down. Blitz coming and down he goes. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Here we go. Grand 38. Grand 38. Play action. It's Taylor. Looking downfield for... And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes inbounds there. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Again, it's McCoy, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. So he runs it for one yard, then no gain. I don't know that you go back to that well here on third down. Yeah, I don't know that you do as well, but if you want to get the ball to him, if you want him to have it, maybe you get him into space and throw it to him. Third down, Taylor. Able to shake him off. He shakes him off. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as he's on to punt for Buffalo. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They'll 
They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And he'll be hit and dropped for a loss at the five-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. This is Stewart. And I think we've got a hold here. It's a five-yard pickup for the moment. Let's see what our referee says. Holding offense. So on the big tight end, Holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without Holding. to his own one-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. They've got to do a better job up front and create some space because they're right there, almost literally, on their own goal line. Just a couple of feet away from a safety. That could have been disastrous. The Panthers on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and 15. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And able to get a little more breathing room out to the five-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves them with a fourth down now. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down, seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to the first down. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. <laughs> They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Now the quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, is our focus here in this player spotlight. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. They go play action with Taylor. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. Holding offense. Well, they've already allowed three sacks in this first half. Now a holding penalty. So I think drastic measures had to be taken, right? The regular way was not working. He was getting hit almost every snap, it felt like. They had to try and keep him upright. After the penalty, it's McCoy. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. It's a gain of three, and it'll be second down. That man has still got it. Thomas Davis can do it all. Drop into coverage, rush the quarterback, and of course, make plenty of tackles. Closing in on 1,000 career tackles and consistent. Last year, 106 tackles the year before 105. College safety turned linebacker in the NFL. What a career. Right, let's go. 
Now flags will come in. One of the Bills got going a little early. They'll go again to McCoy. And he powers his way up past the 30. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. The Bills on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 17. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Colton Schmidt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is taken at about the 14. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Panthers will get it here as they take possession. Now onto the field, here come the Panthers. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. here on first down it's caught right side Dixon 23 yards on the play but when you hit him on the move like that he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam oh boy it's gonna be tough to get him down yeah, there was a big window they're lucky they did get him down down throw for Newton his throw incomplete the intended target that time was Jonathan Stewart and now it's second down the effort's always going to be there everyone's always going to try and make a catch but under throwing balls I think are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop break and come back and get it tackled right on the midfield logo give him four on the ground there they're now left with third and six two minutes to play here in the first half back with more from charlotte after this Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. The Panthers on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This will be third and six. From the 50, Newton. And caught left side, Olsen. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 
Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. Here now, a look at LaShawn McCoy. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. See if he can look and do some soul searching now. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. So here we go, first and 10 now. Here we go. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Second down, here's Taylor. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Colton Schmidt now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Pulled in at the 24. Now he goes spin. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
And the attention now shifts to Kelvin Benjamin. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers would tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. On first down, Newton. And this one complete right side to Funches. A big play there just before halftime. 45 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. But run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. In the red zone this time. From the red zone now, Newton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. This is Olsen, and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So they're operating in the red zone. A shotgun snap for Newton. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there. And that'll bring up second down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. To throw on second down, Newton. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. He was looking for the connection with Devin Funches. And it's third down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Now Newton on third and goal. And he's going to be dropped back in the 15-yard line. Now a timeout signal for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play.
So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. right through and they continue to lead in the battle of field goals here it's now nine to three so he's been a busy man here in this first half that's three field goals for him now not just three field goals but three for three so even though this offense is struggling a bit putting it in the end zone it's still been able to come away with points Knocking through the field goal. Here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is fielded at the goal line. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. 20, 10. And he takes it the distance. No time remaining. No cloth on the field. Yeah, no flags. And it's a kickoff return to end the first half. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. Steven Hauschka for the point after. And he puts it through. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Bills taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Panthers haven't played their best football and trail because of it. The Bills will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Panthers with possession halfway through one. Big Kyle Williams getting to the QB for the sack. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. About halfway through the second quarter, Munderland's going to push his way to the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. First and 10, Munderland's got to take down the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Gano's got it on the tee. Clay's going to get a chance to make it happen here, and he'll take this all the way for a touchdown. They go up 5-1. All right, thank you, Larry. Plenty of intrigue to come. A one-point game as we get set for half two. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Bills now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
And they start the second half with a carry by McCoy. Nice footwork by McCoy. Rashawn McCoy off to the races. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 75 yards. And the Bills will extend their lead. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral. Now, Hausch could attack on the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And that one carries out of the side of the end zone here. So it's a touchback and bring it out to the 25. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. They start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And he'll running right through it. He finds an opening past the 40. And yeah, they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That good for 22 and a first down. And that's why defense coordinators always preach 11 guys to the ball. Because sometimes you have a missed tackle, but if you have a swarm of guys around, less room for them to roam even after the first missed tackle. In this case, tackle is missed. Plenty of open field to get after that. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Cam, option left, and he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level and get the linebacker. When you're not allowed to climb, you got a free hitter, and that's what we saw there, and a really nice play resulted for them. got this one just across midfield to the 49. A keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. And that was a nice, strong run by the guy they call the field general. The Panthers on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. This will be third and six. A 
operating from the gun. Newton. Oh, I can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved a first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Well, they did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. field now comes the Bills offense and coming off a one play drive that was so deflating for the defense what, what's their mentality how do they rally here and stop this offense well hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done but to allow a run of that length that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Taylor with a give to McCoy. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Bills on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he is going to get the first down, it looks like, as he's up to the 12. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go, and he jumped a little bit too early. So following the penalty, now first and five. Now a play fake here on first down. Man open right side, it's the tight end Clay. The 40, he's at the 30, past the 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Charles Clay, 83 yards, and the Bills will add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that.
Hauschka now for the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. Fozzie Whitaker now on the return. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. first down and the tip there altered the ball flight and it falls incomplete it'll be second down you gotta give some credit they're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away and that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give some type of a pop or a shove hoping to bring his arms down Stewart on the counter, and he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> He releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And well done here. That one will kick out of bounds at about the 8-yard line. And here come the Bills. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, is it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They'll run it now, out of the gun. 
Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. But it was stopped on that play, but he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Bills on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and 11. From the gun, Taylor. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And he gets this one up just shy of the 35 to the 34. A very solid gain of 27. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here we go. And he'll give it here to his running back. And a short gain down to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Second down following the run. Let's go. To throw is Taylor. From the gun, he'll throw. Throw left side complete. It's Holmes. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Bills on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This time it's third and three. Black round, black round. McCoy down to the 25. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. When we talk about Luke Keekley, you can't talk about his overall game without talking about his intelligence and how he controls the whole defense. He quarterbacks that defense and at times will actually make checks just like a quarterback would on offense to get them into the right defense. They definitely were on that play. How about that finish? Holding that to a minimal gain. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first. This now from 42 yards out. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. Spent the last six years as the kicker for the Seattle Seahawks, place where they called him Hausch Money. 
now in Buffalo. Conditions somewhat similar, I would say, between Seattle and Buffalo. Well, Seattle, you get a lot of rain. Buffalo, when the season gets a little later, you get a lot of cold weather. A lot of cold weather, maybe even a little bit of snow. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Play fake to Stewart. It's Newton. And his throw is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. to throw again. Newton and Olsen over the middle. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Panthers on third down. Not getting the job done at all. A very poor one for 10. Here it's third and three. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. Breaks a tackle. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent, just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. On second down, Taylor. Over the middle, it's Holmes. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, 
I think, have running back in their background. down it's Taylor gonna drop this off to McCoy complete and he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48 give him eight on the play and it'll make it a second down And some options here for the offense on second and two. Come on, let's go. Taylor now off the bootleg. He's got his man on the crossing route. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. now in Charlotte. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. McCoy They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Now a 20th carry here for McCoy. And he'll go down at the 28. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football, and this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in his own. Now Taylor with a draw to McCoy. Down right around the 25. A gain of three, second down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And yeah, not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football, keep the clock grinding, keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Here we go. On third down, Taylor. This complete to the tight end, Clay. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Now, this will be the ninth play on this drive. Now McCoy, hammering for the goal line. He loses 
lose the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. You and I have been around teams, and they all have goals for games, don't they? And every team we've ever talked to says what? No turnover. <laughs> don't turn the ball over. Zero. And they were that close to getting it done. Won't cost them today, but they'll hate that when they're watching the game tape. Carolina getting set to take the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Following the fumble recovery, Newton. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Second and ten, Newton. That's complete over the middle to Stewart. And they're going to get this one all the way out to the 25-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. and 10. Newton looking left side and he's got a man. That's Shepard. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Fresh set of downs here. Again, Newton. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Tight end Olsen. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Panthers on third down. They've been stymied left and right. Converted only one time. This is third and seven. Newton now to throw. And Dixon over the middle. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down.
Newton on first down. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It's a gain of five, and that'll make it a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. False start, offense. Movement again, and they'll march even further backward. Ball start, offense. Newton. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Newton throwing again. Looking for Benjamin, but it's intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And now nothing but green ahead of him. And he will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. Here's Hauschka for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early.
to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. On first down, Newton. It's caught right side, Dixon. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. On second down, here's Newton. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. From the gun, here's Newton. <laughs> Open man is Stewart, it's complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you can actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now whistles, flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. offense. First and 15 here behind the chains. A shotgun snap for Newton. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. We've been together a little while now, partner. How often do we actually describe tight ends as nifty? Because that's what I think of when I see Greg Olson on the field. His ability to run routes, create space and separation, and make those catches downfield. Yeah, sure consistent. The numbers the last couple of years almost identical and both over 1,000-yard seasons. And now a first down following that long game. Now whistles, flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. False start, offense. seven-yard line. Ramon Humber coming in from that outside linebacker spot. He gets him down for a loss of five. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Now whistles. 
Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. False start offense. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Out of the gun, Newton. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Jerry Hughes in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying <laughs> to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Getting late in the fourth now, Charles. Two-minute warning just around the corner. Yeah, some teams just want to get to that spot, take a breath, and then come out and attack for the rest of the game. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. face now with a third and 12. That was a good run and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play. First level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position end up making the tackle. And oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. Come on, let's go. And to give this time to the tailback. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down.
Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. Taken in at the 11. Oh, good move. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Panthers will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Carolina getting set to take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So the defense gets to the quarterback. Now the offense backed up on second down. Operating from the gun. Newton. It's hauled in by Shepard. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Third down at eight now. I got 19, I got 19. Single, 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 10. That's it for eight. 52. From the gun, Newton. It's caught, <laughs> Shepard. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Accepted. Picked off by the rookie from LSU, Tredavious White. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done.
So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Till next time, we say so long from Charlotte.